Welcome everyone, this is Viking, and today we're going to look at the Vigan in the anti-shipping role. I've covered basic uh, startup in, uh, in another video, so I'm just going to get cracking here. We're going to be using the RB-15F missile. It, our target is close enough that we don't need a tank, so we'll just ditch that. Request rearming. Copy. The RB-15 is, um, is what you always want to use if you have it available. The RB-04 is, uh, uh, has a range, is also available. It's got a range of about uh, 30, 35 kilometers, I think. And the RB-15 has a range of 70 kilometers. So it's uh, the better missile. It is a bit more complicated, though. If you decide to try using the RB-04, I don't think you'll have any trouble with it. It's very straightforward. The RB-15 is a little bit trickier, so we're going to cover that today. I'm just going to wait for the red label to go away and the compass to sort of clear up. And it looks like that's coincided nicely with rearming complete. So we're going to load the data cartridge. I put it in. Yeah, I did. And we are at airfield 9015. I'm going to put that in as my... Uh, we're, we're at uh, airfield 15. And so I'm, instead of 9015 for the uh, primary airfield that we're going to land at, I'm going to put in 9915. Make it the secondary. And we'll do the rest in the air. Oh, wait, I'm just going to flip it over to uh, Benagrands and confirm that we are, in fact, taking off on runway 307. So that is correct. If I needed to change that, I would just, in Benagrands, still in output mode, I would hit the recipro reciprocal heading that way. But 30 is the runway we want. Release the parking brake. Taxi. Now we know our targets are on a bearing of 2045, or at least thereabouts. Lining up on the runway. That looks about right. Hit the brakes. Hit the reference button to correct our heading. Okay. And that all looks good. All right, let's take off. Afterburner to stage two. Easy does it, steady as we go. And rotate. Gear up. And third stage burner. HUD glass up. Come around to 245. We've got some friendly ships behind us, so that's what's showing up on the RWR there. No need to be, no cause for, for alarm there. And we're going to do our search from about 350 meters up. Gear up. 
give or take. It doesn't have to be precise. All right, so we've got our weapon selector in attack mode. That's what we want. We've got this set in series, which means we're going to fire both missiles uh, at the same time, not the exact same time. I guess I can kill the afterburner at this point. I did not actually mean to go supersonic, I just forgot. So we'll take the autopilot off as we fall back out of the transonic range, and the aircraft behaves a little funny, and autopilot again. All right, so series means we fire both missiles. Um, uh, almost simultaneously, there's like two seconds between the releases, but uh, but it gets rid of both of them. And uh, we could fire in standard mode, that's a little bit simpler, but I want to illustrate the difficult parts, so we're going to go with valve. Now, if we look at the uh, data weapons sheet uh, for, uh, for the RB015, we find that uh, the, the convoy attack uh, programming is uh, eight at the beginning and three at the end. So we're going to go over to TACT where we program attack stuff in. Um, in output mode, it shows us that our, there are zeros for the outboard pylons because we didn't take any uh, wingtip missiles. And it shows one and one here for the inboard wing pylons. Uh, those are the RB15 missiles. And one and one for the fuselage pylons. Those are our sidewinders. We're going to fence in, but leave the formation lights on. And we're not going to turn on the audio portion of the RWR just to keep the video clean. Anyway, tact, input mode, eight, one, two, three, four, zeros, and three. Enter. And so now we've programmed our missiles to use a convoy attack pattern. We're going to turn on our radar. Put it out to maximum range. We're on a heading of 245, and so we'll see what we see. So far, big nothing. Now, the radar is currently in linear mode. We can switch it between logarithmic and linear with that switch. Linear is um, has more shades of gray. Or, pardon me, logarithmic has more shades of gray, and linear is very stark black and white stuff. Now I'm also going to adjust the radar antenna a little bit. I'm going to raise it up so that it's scanning a little bit further out in front. The radar antenna is tough to manage. I'm going to slam it all the way down. And you see how the beam sweep gets narrower? If you want to restore it to default, just put it up from that until you get the widest possible sweep, and then don't put it up any further. And you'll have, like, so, like, the, I'll do it again. Down all the way, narrow beam um, sweep, and then up a little bit, just tapping up. That's pretty much the default. And then what I want to do is scan out yet further. Than, oh, wow, we found something already. Okay, so that's linear. This is logarithmic. It's a little bit harder to see, so I often find that when I'm searching, especially on things like OpenSea, um, linear is the way to go. All right, so I'm going to pause it real quick here um, because I, did, I, didn't expect them to, I didn't expect to find them this quickly. So now i got to explain how the RB15 follows waypoints B6 through, or pardon me, BX6 through BX9. Now, um, B6 and BX6 have no relationship with one another. Um, the BX waypoints are not waypoints, they're mark points. Um, and um, they're basically used to tell uh, this missile where to go. You can use BX uh, 1 through 5, uh, just sort of at your leisure. Um, if, you, uh, if, you, if you know where some targets are, like if someone says, hey, I've got a target for you over the radio, and you just want to say, okay, go ahead, store it in BX 1 or BX 2, something like that. Um, and that way you won't mess up your, uh, your flight plan with, uh, with the regular waypoints. You'll just be storing mark point data. But that's a bit of a tangent. Um, getting back to the RB-15s and how it handles BX through B, uh, BX-6 through BX-9. BX-6 is the point at which the missiles descend from whatever altitude you launched them at to sea skimming. And they do the sea skimming because that makes it more difficult for the enemy ships to detect them and knock them out with, uh, with the ship's defenses. Uh, what we're going to be targeting are these 
Chinese destroyers. Now we've only got two missiles and there's four ships because we're going to do two different attack runs. And so BX-6 is Descend to Sea Skimming level. BX-7, that's the dogleg. That's where it uh, changes direction and heads on towards BX-8. BX-8 is where we expect the targets to be. And you've got to get that pretty precise. You've got to be within a couple of miles. Um, BX-9 is the self-destruct waypoint. It's purely optional, but if you're firing these missiles into a, like a, a harbor or something like that, and if they miss the target, you don't want them to blow up a random building in town, um, you can set uh, the BX-9 waypoint to be further out to sea. And so if it can't find anything at, at BX-8, it'll turn around, head to BX-9, and uh, self-destruct. Um, so we're not going to do BX-9. We're in open ocean, and there's no risk of hitting friendlies. Um, now, if you want, you can make BX-6, 7, and 8 manually. But it's faster if we just put BX-8 right on the target and let the Vigan automatically create BX-6 and 7. But we're going to have to reposition them. Now, this is ha all happening kind of fast. Um, so I'm going to do things pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to start by um, I'm going to start by hitting BX and 8, and that'll put BX8 up here. And then I'm going to hit the T1 trigger, and I'm going to use the uh, the radar stick to slew the crosshairs out to this dot, where the where the enemy destroyers are. And then I'm going to hit uh, when I get it right on dead center. I'm going to hit TV fix to create waypoint BX8 out there in the middle of the ocean. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to pause it again. Oops, I'm intact. Got to do that from act pause. BX8 TV. Slew the radar crosshairs out. I think we've basically... I'm putting it into logarithmic instead of linear because I lost contact at just that point. Okay, so now I've done TV fix and we've got waypoint BX8. So now that I've done that, actually I don't even have to pause it, BX7. That's the dog leg doing the same thing, TV fix, and it's at a weird point. Now we're going to put that out to about, uh, say, there. And BX6, BX6 going to put that basically right in front of me because I want it to go down to sea skimming pretty soon. Okay, so we've got uh, BX6 there, BX7 there, BX8 there. That is, uh, that's how we're going to do this. Now, here's the thing. If you fly past BX6 while you're figuring all this out, it won't let you perform the attack. Um, and that is a mistake that a lot of people make sometimes. They, 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 they make waypoint BX8, they figure, okay, well, that's the one I need. I'm not worried about sea skimming or dog legging or whatever. It can just fly straight there. It's fine. Um, and so they make waypoint BX8, and then they wait until they're in range, and then they can't fire the weapons because they don't realize that the computer has created BX6 and BX7, and they've already flown past. So that is a mistake that you might accidentally make. Um, if for whatever reason you're not getting range cues, you might want to check and see if maybe you've already flown past BX6 and 7, because that can certainly happen. I did it a few times while I was figuring this out myself. Okay, so BX8 is at about 75 kilometers distance, and the range of the missile is about 70 kilometers. Uh, now, it does a dogleg, so it's going to need a little extra gas, but not that much. So we're very close to within range. So we're going to pop this baby over to attack mode. And now we get the ranging information on the HUD. Now, because we've got all this information already, I'm going to dive back down to about 200 meters. And I see now, with my autopilot on, that the, uh, the range queue has come within those two outer bars, so that means we are good to go. We can just fire. Uh, 
and they're going to head off towards waypoint BX6. And I've asked my autopilot to steer me to the left, please, and head me on back to, to base. It's not going to, it's not going to uh, come to a correct course, but it is going to do a safe left turn for me. And for my waypoint, I'm going to go back to nav. I'm going to hit uh, airfield 2, because that's the diversion airfield we talked about. These guys are not at BX6 yet, so I'll kill the autopilot, make a hard turn. And I'll straighten out a little bit to the right of where I need to be because we want to launch these missiles. And now they've passed the X-6, so they're descending down to sea skimming height. Lovely, lovely. And for my part, I think I will straighten out a little bit. I've got a waypoint marker on my hut up there. And we're also gonna take it down real low because I don't think these ships are going to be able to fire on, fire back at us, but uh, it's fun to skim the ocean. Ordinarily at this point I'd punch the burner just to create as much space between them and, uh, and me as possible, but I don't want to have to deal with the uh, autopilot going wonky in the transonic range uh, while I'm doing F6 views of the missile. Missiles. We'll occasionally check back here to make sure I don't fly into a container ship, which is very possible at this height. Now, on their terminal run from BX-7 to BX-8, they'll actually get even closer to the water than this. But for now, we'll just watch them go. There is a slim possibility that both of these guys will go for the same target, but it's far more likely that they will go for two different targets, and that's what we want. And they have hit BX-7, and they're making the turn. And we can see in the distance some ships on the horizon. Just gonna zoom out and get an F11 cam stored. Back to F6. And now they're splitting up a little bit. They're splitting up because they're going for different targets. And this is what I meant when I said they're gonna see skin really low on the terminal phase. Those guys are down a lot lower than I would care to be. Boy, I hope my Vigan doesn't crash into a tanker right now, because I am not cutting back. All right. It's coming around, and F-11 cam. Boom. That's two down. So now that we're back controlling the, the jet for real, I'm going to kill the autopilot. I'm going to gain a little bit of altitude, and I'm going to go supersonic. And as we go supersonic, it pitches down, and that's why I gain just a little bit of altitude, because I want to fight that. We are out of the transonic range, so I can trim up a little. Whoa. Trim down. We're going to go around this container ship. Set the autopilot. And this is fun, because we're just we're so close to the deck. We're doing 1,400 kilometers per hour. All we can hear is the ocean noise because our camera is in front of a supersonic jet. And let's hear that new sonic boom that came with uh, the new patch a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Mm, one more time. Do it.
And so we're cooking along at almost Mach 1.3. We've still got 50, or pardon me, 60% of our fuel left. I'm going to decrease the radar range scale to about 30 kilometers there. And it's coming back onto the scope. Time to slow her down a little. We're going to drop to full mill and we're going to gain some altitude because we are well out of range of the two destroyers that remain. And passing through the transonic range, we get that pitch up that happens when we go subsonic. I'll let the autopilot take care of the trim for me. And we're going to go Banagran. Yep. It's still on runway 30 because that's where we were going to come in. I'm going to set the thrust reverser. And I'm going to set the auto throttle. Auto throttle will basically set the throttle at whatever we need to maintain a speed of 550 kilometers per hour, which is the speed that, uh, that is safe to lower the, um, the landing gear. And I'm going to put the HUD into visual landing mode. And... I'm going to hit Slav C to lock this glide slope line in front of us. If you, It can go off to the side if you don't have that in, uh, in F, Fran. All right, we're going way, way, way too fast to land, so we're going to kill the autopilot. Oh, and by the way, this uh, red light here tells you that your auto throttle's on. So I see the runway there, and I'm just going to do a big right-hand turn to bleed off a bunch of speed because the speed brakes on this thing don't do very much at all. And now I'm getting the excessive AOA alert. And now that we're, now that it's safe to lower the, uh, the landing gear, I'm gonna do that. And the HUD goes away when you're pointed way down. So as I pull up a little bit, the symbology comes back. Went a little too far there. Basically, you want to put the, uh, the velocity vector up just a bit above the threshold of the runway until the glide slope line touches the foot of the runway and then you want to put the velocity vector down on it. You're going to have to do a little trimming as you do this. And we're basically on glide slope here. And we're pretty close to being on speed as well. The velocity vector just changed to a sync rate indicator. That's cool. As long as the sync rate indicator is between the glide slope line and the horizon, we're good to go. A little nose down to put weight on the front wheels to engage the thrust reversers. Try and straighten out here. And then we'll let it take us backwards. Kill the throttle. Because we're passing through our own exhaust here. Kill the thrust reverser. So that we can... Oh, sorry about the track IR jerk there. I just noticed there's a moth in my room. Not to worry. We'll deal with that later. Maybe a little bit more thrust reverser. And kill it again. Backing up over this, and throttle forward to kill our backwards momentum. Come to a stop. All right, I'm going to hold down the wheel brakes, click this, and release the wheel brakes. Now the parking brake is set. Turn off the radar and turn off the heads up display. Uh, put it just in BER, standby. And that means that we won't overheat as we are rearming for round two. 
fuel up. Now, when you take off again, you got to change the waypoint from uh, L2, secondary landing airfield, to uh, LS, takeoff airfield. And I see that as we came in, Terranav didn't have time to get a fix, so uh, uh, we may be as far as three kilometers away from where we think we are. To address that, when I take off again, I'm going to do a pass over the island so that uh, I can get a Terranav fix. I guess if I were doing this right, I would have put my lights back on. Doesn't take too long to refuel a Vigan, but there's still a bit of a waiting game, so I'm going to speed up time. And now we just got to wait for the rearming complete. Refueling complete. Oh, refueling's complete, now we gotta wait for rearming. Now you can launch RB-15s anywhere from 50 meters above sea level to 2,000 meters above sea level. So it's got a pretty wide release envelope. And that's why I didn't bother messing with QFE. Technically, you're supposed to set the QFE. Um, but, uh, but I knew that it was roughly equal to QNH. QNH is 1012. This is 1012.5. It's close enough. It's fine. So kill the parking brake by tapping the wheel brakes. Set the HUD to nav mode. And second stage afterburner. Oh, that's right. I put a lot of trim on it when we came in, so it kind of lifted off all by itself there. I didn't actually pull up on the stick. Do some nose down trim, so the velocity vector is at the top of the three degree bar. And we're airborne. Gear up. Third stage. HUD glass up. And for my waypoint, I'm going to set BX8 because that is uh, roughly where the ships are. It's not precise anymore, um, because uh, the two that didn't sink have moved on, but they haven't moved on that quickly. They are just ships after all. So this will give us a rough idea of how far we have to go, about 170 kilometers. And what direction we should go? Oh, I never did the, uh, I never did the tear nav fix. It seems to me the INS corrected itself based on the fact that it knew what runway we were at, but I'm still going to try and get a 5-0 on this baby. And there's the 5-0. So we've got a position fix. And we're going to head back out in a west-southwest direction. Radar on. And we're still going to stay up at a height of about 350 meters. 340. Good enough. Got the autopilots on. Going to increase the range on the radar, and we're going to put it in linear mode. Going to bump the antenna up just a bit. There we go. That helps us see a little further. And it looks like in the foreground here, uh, it just flew under our radar. Antenna down, antenna down. Linear, or logarithmic, I mean. Yeah, I thought I spotted the uh, that container ship on our radar, and I was going to illustrate that point. Oh, yeah, there it is. 
There we go. At a range of 30 kilometers, it's about halfway down, so it's about 15 clicks away. Let's just pause this real quick. Go here. Oh. I was kind of hoping that... It, oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Okay, so we're guessing 15 clicks, and... It's about 15 clicks. So that is a thing that you can use the air-to-ground radar on. They, they call it an air-to-ground radar on the Vigan. It does work in an air-to-ground pet capacity to some degree, um, but it's really more of an air-to-sea radar. As a matter of fact, I have it in land mode. In sea mode, it's a little bit better at picking up targets, but it fell under our radar beam just as I... Yeah, there we go. It's not perfect. It's a... Uh, it's a little bit difficult to work with. It's a little bit difficult to interpret. It takes a lot of practice to just to sort of get used to using this thing. All right, put it in linear to help me see how far we're scanning. Raise the antenna just a bit. We're in linear. We're in C mode. Let's try land mode. Okay, all the way down, back up a bit. There we go. That seems like it's at just the best elevation possible for us. So it's in C mode now. And we're gonna put it back to logarithmic. And it only goes to a maximum of 120 kilometers. Our BX-8 waypoint is at 130. So it'll be coming down into the top of the scope pretty soon. And in the meantime, um, instead of firing from A and F mode, which is what I did before, this time we're going to use the quick mode. We're going to fire in SPA mode. And basically, that just means the RB-15 jumps off the rail and... Wait, why am I getting... Okay, I'm not sure why that red light started blinking on me there. Uh, but basically, um, SPA mode is... Actually, hmm. You know what? I'm going to call an audible here. I'm going to switch it from series to impulse. I'm going to confirm that we are at 8,003 for group mode. Actually, you know what? No, we want single target. I'm, I'm pulling up my kneeboard, and I'm going to flip all the way over to the RB15 page. These extra pages are a mod. I'll leave a link to this mod in the description. But basically, RB, RB15. Okay. Um, You know what? I skipped past it. This is, this is, these are the instructions for using the RB-15. I wanted the weapons code thing. CK-37 weapons input codes. Okay. So for RB-15, we see that 800,003 is the convoy attack, group target, large search area. Um, and if we want just a single target, that's 800,000 even. So we're only going to fire one missile, and it's going to search for a single target. And that's still going to be on the pre-programmed way. So we're going to have to make a B8 fix as we get closer and detect the targets again. So we're going to do one shot with the single target mode, and then we're going to do the quick launch mode. So unpause, tact. Input 800, whoops, 8, ha, 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 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, enter. So it's in single target now. And we're just, it's in impulse, so it's only going to fire the 1. And our BX6 and 7 waypoints are still there. Um, BX... BX6, BX7, so we got no problems as far as that goes. BX8 will be, we're going to have to adjust that a little bit as we get closer. There 
And I'm not seeing these guys. I'm gonna change course. See if they're easier to pick up from another angle. Okay, there we go. There we go. I'm picking up a long return there, but I'm not getting a specific location. Linear. Wait a minute. I think I see it. I think I see it. Okay. T1. Put it down here. TV. Yep, that's it. Those are the two remaining boats. Okay, so we're going to go to attack mode and do what we did before. I see that, uh, that we're basically within range here. So, pits away, one missile. And off it goes. And we're just going to go into basically a loop. Now, before I do that loop, I'm going to use some left roll trim trim this thing out and I'm gonna get down on the deck because I don't want their I don't want them shooting at me while I'm watching the missile go in so down on the deck on autopilot and just keep me in a big long right hand loop thank you very much mr. autopilot should probably fence out. So there we go. It um, it may interest you to know uh, that there is a button you can bind for resetting the roll trim entirely, so you don't have to manually trim it back to uh, to center once you fire the second missile. Um, oh, I see we've hit BX6. Here we're a little higher up than we're supposed to be, but that's uh, that's okay. I know the radar altimeter is a little bit funny when we're banked by this much. And the important thing is that we're not in the drink, nor are we within range of Mr. Warship's missiles. It's just a destroyer. It's not a frigate, so I mean it doesn't have a tremendous ability to attack us. I'm not even sure what the missile capabilities on this thing are. It's, uh, it's designed primarily for anti-submarine warfare. But that thing at the, on the left-hand side, that looks like a surface-to-air missile to me. So I don't want it coming at me. All right. Let's see how our current missile's doing. see how we're doing. Still a thousand kilometers per hour, right above the ocean surface. I've turned off the internal radar. Turned off the radar. Not internal. It's a redundant term. And it looks like it already hit the X-7 because I think we're on final here. I think it's on the terminal approach. Now the radar on the RB-15 is good to about 20 kilometers. So once it gets within 20 kilometers of a target, it can lock something up. And I think when it goes right down to sea skimming, that means that it, uh, it has right now. I think it's locked up that target. And I'm actually kind of glad that it locked up the far one. Oh! Yeah, okay, it locked up the far one. And boy, it's going to hit it right in the face. But 
home. That guy is done for. Anyway, I'm glad it hit the far one, because the near one uh, is what's going to be locked up by the automatic uh, quickfire thing that I'm about to do. I'm going to take her out of autopilot. Turn the radar back on. And head on out towards BX-8. Going to come down on the deck to make ourselves more difficult to spot. But we're definitely well within range. We're within uh, 50, less than 50 kilometers from the target we intend to strike. And I'm going to launch this one from about 60 meters above sea level. And we're going to put it in SPA mode because that's how we do the quick fire of the RB-15 on the Vigan. I'm turning on the sounds because, holy shit, seriously, seriously, it's locking me. All right, screw it. Okay, missile launch, and there's my missile launch. Goodbye. See if we can notch that baby. Get down in the weeds. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. Okay, I'm going to press that fix the rudder trim button, or the roll trim, I mean. Is it still coming for us? I can't even see. I think their missile self destructed. Okay, that was exciting. Uh, put it back to nav mode. Landing airfield. And this thing is just scooting straight on out ahead. Oops, that's the Kuznetsov. What? The? Okay, there we go. I've got a, I got some, some other ships in this, besides the destroyers we're trying to blow up. So, hopefully, our RB-15... Yeah, it's roughly on course. Okay, we've got a moment here, so I'm going to bring this around to here cut over to the quickfire RB15 it looks like it's gonna miss past the back of the boat if it doesn't course correct it's got to be within 20 kilometers by now right Come on, buddy, you can do it. Okay, yeah. Coming around to the side, it does this kind of serpentine thing because it wants to uh, avoid any incoming close-in weapon system stuff. And that's it. Boom. It's down. As always, pitching down a little bit when it goes supersonic. Always got to be careful with that. Out of the transonic range, so we can do autopilot at 20 meters. Look at the acceleration on that. 1450, 1470. So, to sum up, we've launched four RB-15s. The first two were in convoy attack mode. They split up and attacked separate targets. Then we had another one that was also on the pre-planned um, BX mark point uh, uh, attack pattern, and that one was set to a single target by programming the uh, attacked section of the CK-37 computer. And uh, then after that one, we uh, 
we launched one in quick fire mode where you basically just point at roughly where you think the target is, tell the missile to go straight until it finds something, and if it gets within 20 kilometers of a target before it runs out of gas, it'll lock on and kill the target. Now, when I set it to single target, you might think like, well, if you're only firing one missile, why did it matter whether you're saying single target or group. Good point. Um, if you set it to single target and you fire a pair of missiles, those missiles will try to converge on the same target, but they'll also try to move apart from one another so that if it's firing machine guns to knock out your missiles, um, then it won't be able to fire at both of them at the same time, at least not with the same gun. Another thing that's important as you head back to base is uh, don't get cocky about being able to turn really well at Mach 1.3. Um, the Vigan is one of those jets that does not have a fly-by-wire system, so it will happily let you rip your own wings off. Um, obviously, good to be careful about that. We're going crazy fast and we've done some hard maneuvers, so the INS system estimates that we may be off um, by as much as 3 kilometers for our, uh, our current own position estimation. Three kilometers is still close enough that you'll get within visual sight of your, uh, of your airfield, so it's not that big a deal. But it is worth noting. Come to think of it, I mean, we're within about 40 clicks. Why can't I see it? Oh, there, <laughs> there it is. The nose was blocking it earlier. We're currently at 1,500 meters. That's too high. I'm gonna kill the throttle and dive. Yes, yes. I'm going to turn off the sound effects because all the hostile targets are down. Oh, you know what? I don't, I don't think I remembered to reset the auto throttle before. Yeah, the auto throttle um, is this lever, and it. Uh, and it automatically disables itself on a software level uh, when, uh, when you've got weight on wheels. And then you're supposed to remember to manually disable it after that. But I didn't. And so you slide it back into the up position. And then when you slide it down again, it will re-enable itself. I'm going to go to full mill and re-enable AFK, the auto throttle. Um, many of you probably know that, uh, that the Swedish word for speed is fart. <laughs> so that's the automatic fart control, which is, I mean, come on, in English that's pretty hilarious. No offense to my Nordic friends, but, uh, yeah, that, that's fucking funny. Pop this thing into visual landing mode. Set the, uh, Slav C to Fran, so that uh, the glide scope cue is dead ahead. Do a hard turn to bleed off speed. Actually, I did that turn prematurely, but I'm still going to drop my landing gear. And when your gear is up, the uh, auto throttle keeps your speed at about 550 kilometers per hour. And when your gear is down, it keeps it at, um, I want to say 300-ish. I can't remember exactly. I can't remember what actual on-speed landing is because I always just use the HUD cue.
Yeah, I just fell below 300 kilometers per hour, and I heard it kick in. And you see how the, uh, the line is not going through the circle? That's because our INS has drifted by possibly as much as three kilometers. So we're not going to pay a whole lot of attention to that. We're just going to do this visually. Clear a little bit of pitch up on the trim. Yeah, it looks like 280 is the, is the speed that the uh, auto throttle is trying to maintain. When the, uh, when the velocity vector changes to a sync rate indicator, it's basically telling you how fast you can safely touch down. And so as long as the sync rate indicator is between the glide slope line and the horizon line, you're touching down with intolerances. And as soon as... Oop, so we want to get it up a little bit. And that's plenty. And as soon as we touch down, we put weight on the front wheel with a nose down movement. So the thrust reverser kicks in. Now I am going to remember to actually hardware disable the uh, the auto throttle. Duh. Kill the radar. Kill the throttle. Disable the HUD to put it on standby there, because we don't want that burning out. Disable thrust reverser, forward thrust. Thrust reverser back on. Come back up. Not that much different than a car at this point. Whoop. might have went just a little bit off-road there. Thrust reverser disabled. Some forward thrust to kill the momentum. Once we start moving forward, we hit the wheel brake. And wheel brakes, parking brake. And we're all tucked away there. So... That was a fun flight. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.